to show us the importance of lifting up our hands before you. Especially when we are threatened, when we are weary, when we are discouraged, when we are attacked. Teach us to pray. Teach us to do that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this story is a very, very interesting story about a praying man. What Moses was doing was intercession. As he raised up his hands before God, not getting tired, the Bible says Israel was winning. But as he grew tired, when he became weary, the Amalekites were defeating the Israelites. So he was helped by two men, Aaron on one side and Ur on the other, so that they could win the battle. I believe that is how God expects us to be, to lift up each other's hands in prayer, to push each other in prayer. I'm still waiting for the my names that I requested on paper so that we do, and I, I think I have done this, I have asked and I have asked again so that we can lift up each other in prayer. The, the reason the papers are delaying is because people no longer understand the importance of being covered in prayer, even being mentioned in prayer. Paul said, I do not forget mentioning you in your prayer. But, but not always that, you know, at times we, we actually forget. You, even if you're a pastor, you can forget some names. Of, of, you, of the congregation, but we need to have those papers and, and share names of different people and mention them on our prayer wall. I, I'll be shocked if you don't have your wall at home. I told you how to have a prayer wall where you pin your requests, your prayer, the people you are praying for, the people you are believing God to do certain things, people that request us to pray for them. You know, I mean, it, most of the times when we travel, there are people who request you, Michael, pray for me when God by God, and they write their names, and, and we always have where to put them, to pin them, so that we mention them in prayer. That is the heart of an intercessor. And I'm not saying you mention only those you love. Those who fall in your category. Actually, you can be falling in the same category of weak people. And in your weaknesses, you try to pray for each other. When one, one of you is not evil, even equal to the challenges that you are going through. So when Moses was helped by men, not any other but Aaron and Ul. And I believe these were also chosen by God. These were seasoned intercessors as well that knew how to support the man of God. And he kept praying. And as long as he prayed, Israel was winning. And, and the same thing was done by Samuel at Mizpah when Israel had been given into the hands of the Philistines. The Israelites cried to, to, to Samuel and told him, Go and intercede for us before God. Stand in the gap. That's why I told you that even if one man can stand for this nation and is worthy, God will answer the prayers of that one man. And, and we don't need to be many. So that is why we have this week, this entire week, praying for the nation, crying to God for the nation. And I know God is going to answer our prayers because I've seen God answering prayer. I remember when Ebola hit and they were all overtaken by fear. I remember that time where a few of us, I remember Pastor Deo Musoke, I don't remember others, but we talked about, uh, about it among ourselves and I was supposed to travel. But we, we agreed let us before we go for Nachivubo prayer, we had a prayer at Nachivo where all pastors came. We agreed to fast for four days dry fasting because we are dealing with a crisis. And we didn't broadcast it. We didn't tell people, but secretly, as intercessors, as people who understand what intercession is and standing in the gap, we entered into a time of fasting. I traveled, but I was in fasting, dry fasting for four days. And that is what it took. Where is Ebola today? We went to Nachivu and all these different pastors came, leading in prayer, leading in prayer. And that was the end. But I remember there was a, 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 an airport, was it in Germany somewhere, where they were warning people. It was written, a big 
signpost written about Uganda. Be careful as you go there. The whole nation is like the whole nation was hit by Ebola. Some of you did not even see Ebola people. <laughs> but it was broadcasted. You know how those nations can broadcast as if for them they are very okay and 100% okay. So now you wonder where coronavirus came from. I don't know where they came from. A monkey this time? Or... So we need to pray. We need to ask God to heal and help our land, especially to go through this period of uh, this period of, 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 of campaigns and elections so that we can come over that and have a peaceful transition. Because this is a gate and that is why there is battle at this gate. Now, uh, you know, why did Moses pray? Why did Moses pray and these men supported him? Because God looks at intercessors. When he got through the land, his eyes are on those who are standing in the gap to return his burden to him. Because the pathway of intercession is from the heart of God through the Holy Spirit to the heart of an intercessor. Then the intercessor prays back the will of God to God because he reveals his will to his servants. What is about to do? He said, will I hide anything from Abraham? And he revealed to him he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Why didn't he go to Lot? He said, no, I can't hide this from Abraham. But when he told him his intention, Abraham drew near to God and began to intercede and pleaded for Sodom and Gomorrah uh, but this came from the heart of God. This did not come from Moses. It was not something that he could see with his spiritual eyes. I mean with his uh, physical eyes. But God revealed it to him. And what could he do? Broadcast, oh God has told me he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. That is not what he did. He actually drew close and began to intercede. Yeah, there are some certain consequences when we do not intercede or stand in the gap. The Bible tells us so in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9. If we can go to Ezekiel chapter 9 from verse 1, I'm going to read maybe up to 11. Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, bring the guards of the city here, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen who had write, writing kid, writing kid at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the Lord God of Israel went up from above the cherubim, where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark of the, on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. Another version says those who sigh those who groan, meaning those who pray, those who cry, even if they are crying in secret, private, no one is saying, but they are groaning inside, they are sighing inside. And as I listened, he said to, other, to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter old, young, and maidens, women, and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing and I was left alone, I fell face down crying out, O oh, sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? He answered me, the sin of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They say, the Lord has forsaken the land the Lord does not see. 
So I will not look on them with pity or spare them, but I will bring down on their own heads what they have done. Then the man in linen with a writing kit at his hand side brought back word saying, I have done as commanded. So the question is, who were marked and spared? Prayer people, intercessors, those who groaned, those who sighed. God judged Jerusalem and the sin of prayerlessness as well. It is very evident that he employed the criterion of prayer in, a determine, in determining who God saved and who God damned. Those who sigh, spare them. Those who pray, spare them. Those who intercede. This means that the people who were spared were intercessors. Men who groaned, who cried, who lamented for the abominations being committed in the city. They were crying, they were groaning, praying audibly with grief and groan. That is what the word means. The man who sigh, who cry, who pray, who lament before God can therefore be rendered the men that travel, traveled in prayer, in grief and crying. And these were committed and, you know, committed and sanctified praying believers who righteously fell before God and they are vexed from day to day by the deeds being perpetrated in the city. This is the reason they prayed. This is the reason they interceded. This is the reason they, they lamented. So the same way God is calling upon those who can feel his burden, those who can get his heartbeat, those who know and can discern where a spiritual compass is pointed, those who know where his arm is stretched, and they can follow and they can feel the heart. You know, look at different, you know, when different nations begin to get concerned and, and broadcast. And people like to broadcast even if something is very small. They broadcast it as if there is something so big that, and slowly by slowly, the enemy likes that negative broadcast. He rides on them. That's why we need to wake up and pray. And consecrate ourselves and be determined to ask God to have mercy. Why did God put watchmen on the walls of, Israel, on, of Jerusalem? It was because of that. So that they could watch. So they could, That's why the Bible says, I've set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. In Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6. Which shall never hold their peace day or night. You that make mention of the, the Lord, keep not silent and give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem the praise of the earth. We can do the same. This is not only for Jerusalem. We can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says we'll be blessed. But we can pray for the peace of Uganda. We can be watchmen. We can decide to be like Isaiah. That I will not keep silent until you make Jerusalem, you make Zion a praise. I'm not going to keep silent. And when you read Isaiah chapter 62 from where it begins, from verse 1, if we can go there with me. For Zionist sake, I will not hold my peace. This is a man intercessor. This is the heart of an intercessor. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Do you know you can do this to your child? Yes, if your child is going away from the Lord or is becoming rebellious, you can do the same. That is the love, the same love you have for your child. God just makes your burden to grow and your understanding to widen and your eyes to be wider and to see beyond the natural. And once God allows you to see beyond the natural, you will not rest until there is victory when you are dealing with something. When you are in love, love settles for nothing less than victory. Once you are in love with your child, you cannot say, uh, uh, no, let, let me see whatever will happen. Now when we tell people, let's pray for the nation, and everyone that is telling people, pray for the nation, is putting on a certain color. Yeah, they refer that to it's, oh, now they, these people who are telling us to pray, we know where they belong. So, 
So we shouldn't pray. We should just sit back and be passive and watch things happen. That is not what God requires of us. Let us be like Isaiah who said, For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation like a lamb that burns. And verse 2, 3, then we go. Two. Two, let's flow, let's flow, let's flow together, please. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name. The God, Isaiah is showing, is showing people, this is where you're going when you pray. When you don't keep quiet, the Gentiles will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and the royal diadem. In the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken. When we pray. When we cry out. When we say I will not remain quiet for Jerusalem's sake. I will not keep my peace for Zion's sake. Zion is the name. See, the city is Jerusalem. You can say for Uganda's sake I am not keeping my peace. For Kampala's sake I am known to give myself rest. Till that righteousness shines out. And when you pray, even your confession has to change. You don't have to say, I'm tired of this city. It's the same. No, when you pray, things begin to change. And you even have to change your confession. Because your confession is as good as prayer. Many people don't know that their confession affects them. Affects their families, affects their nation, affects their community. I'm tired of this nation. I'm tired of how will it be a blessing to you when you are tired of it? When you are actually speaking curses. Some are working in certain organizations which you are cursing every morning. You wake up and say, Banangi company in I'm tired of this company. I don't know when God will ever help me. He will not. Because you are cursing the channel through which you get your salary. You need to be careful. I'm tired of this church. Instead of saying that every time you reach the gate, you stay home and rest. If you're not in the mindsibitia. Banange, 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 banange. Apostolic churches are not like that. Uh, uh, you cannot expect us to be 20,001. This is like an apostolic resource center church. So you don't expect certain things. You get resourced, you get equipped, you become even a pastor. You know, when you're coming here, you just know you are going to become a pastor and a person of God where you work. You come here to be serviced, to change oil. That's why we call them these services. Because God has called us to equip. So after equipping, you take the church there in the bucket place, at your workplace. Amina. Amen. Then the Lord is saying that you shall be called Efsba and your land Bura. Bura means married. For the Lord will delight in you as the land shall be and your land shall be married. Your sons and daughters, your young men, as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your son marry you. Beloved, one thing I want you to know, you cannot, God told us this many years back when we are praying for Uganda, 1995. 95. Some of you maybe are, who are looking at me, you were two years old. I was praying already. This is the, one of the words that God gave us and he told us, marry the land. You cannot pray for the land you've not married, you are not in love with. You cannot pray for a community you are not in love with. You cannot pray for a family you are not in love with. If you really like your clan, your family, marry and pray. Marrying means to have a burden, to feel like you want to see the desired end. 
What God is, has in his mind for your family. What God has in his mind for Kampala. What God has his mind in his mind for Uganda. He has a vision. He has a dream. He can give you that dream. He has ever shown us that dream. He, he's, he has he's shown that dream to us. What he intends to do. Maybe during this time I will repeat the prophecy that God gave us for Uganda. The wall of it. And you listen to it. A powerful prophecy that the Lord gave to us. And today, I mean many no longer care, and, 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 but I'm calling you back. I'm calling you back to a place of prayer. I mean, I'm calling you to back to a place of prayer. Because every time we become prayerless, we abort God's purposes. We frustrate God's purposes. And prayerlessness is not just a weakness, it's a sin. It's a sin. Some of you think, ah, oh, no, prayerlessness is a... No, 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 no. A prayerless person is a sinner because you are hindering God's will, purposes for your life, even for your children, for your family. And that's why prayerlessness is one of the great, the biggest door for the coming of many sins. And prayerless people replace praying with preaching, helping the poor, singing. No, all these are good, but you cannot replace it with prayer. Prayer is prayer. is a weapon God has given to us. It's a channel through which we can approach God. So can you please help me ask somebody, but with a concern, and ask the person, how prayerless are you? No, don't say how prayerful. Just say, how prayerless are you? You know what it is today? I can sense. You can feel the atmosphere. Once you, are, you know how to pray, you can feel. And that is why people are very carnal. Churches are carnal. Because they don't know how to meet God. And that, I told you that is going to be my touch during this time. Others will speak, but how do you meet God in your prayer? I know I've met God. What proves you have met God? Because when people become prayerless, they become victims instead of victors. God has made you victor, but you become a victim in a place of prayerlessness. And prayerlessness starts with weariness. Many problems can weigh you down. Or businesses, and you think you are working a lot when you are doing nothing and they're advancing nowhere. Why? Because he is the God who gives us power to make wealth. You need to go to him. Like those people out there who are not born again. They know how to go on their altars and sacrifice and keep checking on it. Let them not deceive you. I have given you many testimonies here. People do things and you need to hear their testimonies. And even now, as people are fighting for this gate of a season, there is a lot of witchcraft activities taking place, which I can't tell you, which I know actually about, in different pockets. People are doing stuff on mountains, in caves, in forests, and there are a lot, a lot. Swayed by those perils, or call it decision in Why? Because you're already weary, and the other altars are influencing now. So we need to wake up. Once you wake up, you begin to see different. You'll begin to call upon God and will show you great and unsearchable things you never knew about. And prayerlessness is also a result of unanswered prayer in one's life and it feels like God has forgotten all about me but delay is no denial God delaying can be one way of answering you in a unique way in a bigger way God delayed in certain certain women's life but did he, didn't he answer them he answered them uniquely good great the mother of Samuel was barren the mother of John the Baptist was barren the mother of Isaac was barren the, mother of, the mothers of these great men of God and prophets were barren. How did God answer them? There was a delay, but the answers were extraordinary. 
So that does not cause you to, to, to become aware and say, I'll change a place, I'll go to another church, I'll become a vagabond. Don't become a vagabond when you are pregnant with God's purposes. They, you might abort in that process. Because failure to pray turns you a victor into a victim. Peter and others failed to pray, defeated by their sleep, and they denied the Lord, left Jesus Christ alone. People who become prayerless, they can deny the Lord. At one time, they can say, no, me, don't tell me that. And some, some of the things we, we, we tie ourselves on, once they don't go through, we become so disappointed. But did God tell you that is the way to go? You say, I want to go out. I want to go abroad. God, 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 God. And you say, but for me, Pastor, I prayed so much to go abroad. I even showed see that. But why did you, what did you hear in your prayer? Because prayer is a two-way. When you present something before God, God can tell you that is my will or it's not my will. Then you can drop it and say, no, I'm not praying for that. No, I pray will work with the United Nations. Did God tell you? Faith comes by hearing. What did you hear? I always ask people, okay, as you pray for that, did you hear God? Did he speak to you in the process? Unless your prayer is a monologue, it's not a dialogue. God is not Buddha. He speaks. It's not a statue. The way he spoke to Moses is the way he can speak to you. The way he spoke to the apostles is the way he can speak back to you. They used to ask him. They used to find out, is this God's will? I remember when we were trying to get a, a mountain of prayer well, after God had told us to look for a mountain prayer. And how much money did we have on the account of trumpet? A hundred thousand shillings. And the Lord told us, look for a bigger place. And we are looking for a hundred acres with a hundred thousand on our account. How can you tell this to that to this generation that understands one thing your account how does your account stand how we how are your savings no we have another place where we save brother we have accounts where rust and moth do not reach and when you begin certain people when you begin to do something things by faith they, they can ask but where did the pastor get my van get to again it is it but Gamba and Yate Gurimufumu Jawakaja. Hundred thousand. We went on Hoima Road. How did we do it? We went on mountains and we could stand there. Lord speak to us. And one of us would say, mm -mm. Auntie Naziga and Sue one, we drove, left, went on whatever, Vachagwe Road, went on Masaka Road. And we said, But let us drive to Entebbe Road. No one directed us and we climbed that mountain to Seguku. Reaching there up, we stood there. I, I remember he was there, Apostle Muli in the past, and Abu I don't remember, what George and Simbi and others. Few, like, we are not men, I think we are like five of us, four. And we stood there and prayed, Lord, is this the place? And the Lord said, yes. And once we knew this is the place, there was only one man who stayed there, at the bottom of that mountain, there are no house. Only trees and monkeys, snakes on that place where you can't buy a plot now. We even made ourselves a way to the top. And then we went down, we took a hole from that man called Salongo. I am the one who broke the ground and anointed and said, this is our place. We are going to take it. And this is your place, Lord. A year passed. We couldn't pay. But we had already sat with a man. And this man was a Muslim. But he left a word with his wife. In case I die, never sell that place. It's for Barukore, a Muslim. Show me your faith. I can show you an action. And the Lord had spoken to us, if we are to take this strategy of prayer altars to any nation, the first nation is Israel, because that is where we got the strategy. And the Lord had spoken to Apostle Melinda, you, you know, got me as his right hand man, 
I was like a Joshua. I would pray. I would, he would tell me, just pray as I advance. It was like Moses and Joshua. Now, this is what happened. We ask each other, how will we ever know? We don't know anybody in Israel. How can you go to Israel? We don't have any contact. And we said, let us pray. We used to do stupid, what we call foolish things. We prayed. And at night, in a vision, God gave Apostle Mulinde telephone numbers. Woke up and wrote them down. And he told me, Michael, I have these numbers over the hour. I called the number, yeah, Israel. And we called. And these people were there. On Mount Olives, one person, another one said, Where? We are in Israel. No copying a phone, no getting a phone number. And you tell me some of you despise prayer and you wait down? Hey! <laughs> Do you know the man went to Israel on the address gotten in a vision? And he has never stopped. Every year he has been going to Israel. One of the main, main speakers. That is how he got that door. And God gave us a word for Europe. It was a word, a prophetic word. And he went. And then we went, we took a team. Prayer. We could be in prayer and God would show us. We could be in prayer and God would open our eyes. So please, many people do not know that prayerlessness is not only habit, but a spirit. The spirit ensures that you do every other thing at the expense of prayer. And the devil has deceived this generation to despise the power of prayer. To think when I get a problem, I will consult a man of God or someone. You never know whom you are consulting. He might have become prayerless already. And you are, you are depending on that person. Telling you, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. As one day, someone was praying for people. And we had a retreat. And we found that the, the good thing, the man of God had, had a sister in our team. And the sister met him there. Hiding himself there, drinking beers. Tio gire biya bulima. Haba mundo zamuari na koko retreat la kubata abagamba. Ina gani bana? Sanzi mwenye nazi. Hali yabantu yabagamba agenze kusabali eno akona kantu. Gamba wegende lize na kuzinobo gamba ansabira aku. Azokubali kawisiki. God is about to fire. So to obtain our freedom and gain our fire, we need to understand all the data tricks and strategy the spirit of the enemy uses to hinder us from praying. But before you understand those dirty tricks, it's also necessary to understand the signs of prayerlessness. What causes prayerlessness and what prayerlessness is exactly. Because prayerlessness can be not praying at all. There are people who have given up prayer. They don't pray at all. You don't even find joy in prayer. If not finding a joy in prayer, that means you need deliverance. Some people want, oh, no, no, you learn to pray. Just pray, you learn to pray. No, people. Some people need deliverance before they can get desire. And you remember I talked about the seven Ds of prayer. And the first one is deliverance. You need to be delivered of certain things that are holding you, that don't want you to speak to God. And more especially, people who give up prayer, who are prayer, whether you know your foundation or not, there must be witchcraft in your foundation. Must. And I'm sorry to say, but there must. Because the power of witchcraft in your foundation do not want you to consult any other God, to pray to any other God, to speak to any other God, even to give. These forces will hold you will give you all the reasons not to do it. So that at the end, you can end like your daddy or your grandpa or someone. 
Because you don't break out to say, no, I have to be different. I have, because me, I show people committed in a shrine. Our parents, you know, leaving work and going to shrine direct, they had dropped us there. We are like in camping, in a boot camp. Men who had responsible jobs coming in a very nice suit like a Pastor Tamari. Is our good example here and it's for suit. They were like, and they could come, put off their coats in good cars by that time. Someone who died driving a Ford, a Land Rover, a Benz, and we even had a Land Rover that used to, the work is to bring those, uh, what, sheep and, and goats for slaughter. So this is what was happening. I saw it. I saw how committed through the night, nights of prayer in a shrine. Singing until demons should show up. I, when I gave my life to Jesus, I, kn I knew this is not a joke. This foundation is not a joke. These people will call me. These people will claim me. These people will keep my name. They don't fear even if you become archbishop. They still call you on that altar. They try you. They keep giving on your behalf as you do not give yourself. They are giving for you. Go and ask. So prayerlessness is terrible. You don't find joy. You feel like people are wasting time. And when you are becoming prayerless, if you have ever been prayerful, the time spent in prayer keeps decreasing instead of increasing. Because you are supposed to increase, you are growing. Everything you do, you are supposed to increase. But if we are decreasing, then something is wrong. Prayerlessness is singing while you should be praying. Sleeping while you should be praying. The men were sleeping and the Lord Jesus told them, why don't you pray so that you don't fall into temptation? Because what you do now will determine how you go through the day. Prayerlessness is praying only at your own convenience. And that should not be like that. Because a love that has no sacrifice, that element of sacrifice, is not love. You have to get out of your way. You have to pray in season and out of season. Not only in your convenience. Because that is your oxygen. That is your breathing system. Is your lifeline. Is your communication line. Prayer is your communication line. That is what you breathe in. Because every time you pray, you inhale the life of God. And exhale the life of this world. It's like exchange. Are you prayerful? Prayerless people pray without spending time on praise, or worship, or word meditation. They don't meditate on the word of God. It's word meditation that pushes you in a place of prayer. I read the book of Andrew Murray. And he was saying they could pray, read the word, meditate, and that word would push them in prayer. Do you read the word? A, prayer, a prayerless spirit manifests when one always eats halfway the food and remembers to bless the food. That is one manifestation. Can you ask your neighbor, Mburi say your neighbor, O cha sabire mere ngo gendo kuria, Ovo ulile chocha guwako. Tumo yintu waluwa wataina mere jorie. But when you're young, you used to do it. What happened today? You don't even teach your children. Everyone is somewhere in the room. Mommy, I'm not coming. Bring my food in the room. And I'm not coming. I'm not coming. Okay, darling, I'm coming. I'm not coming, darling. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm watching a game. Will you come to pray? No, mommy, I don't feel. I don't come. Mommy, mommy don't force us to pray. Go and pray. You can pray for us. No more. No more. No more. Force the guy to pray when you still can. The time will come when you will not be able. When it turns 18, you will find it difficult. Force them now. 
when they are eight, when they are 10, when they are 12, and you know what I'm talking about. No, my new member work for singer, go 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 charico, go 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 go. Mukasola kenyu ya fomu dwaba charim, ba chimani bonda bo, ne wo fana nuti, ba tu gamanti katu jakuvayo jakuvayo. Prayerless people undertake a duty or assignment without praying first. They talk on a journey without praying. They take on a business without praying first. They go to examination for interview without praying first. That is when you know you have become prayerless. You are concerned of how you will put on when you are going for interview instead of knowing who is going with you. How will I look like? Am I smart? Or am I presentable? Don't tell us about presentability when you have no favor. Favor comes upon those who pray. Then when you go, the eyes. Why did the eyes of everyone go to Esther? He had in his, an intercessor behind and she understood how to pray. That's why she stood out. Blinded the king's eyes that she did, he did not even care where Esther was coming from. Do you know that the king did not know where Esther was coming from? He didn't know where the abouts of, of her family background? No. A prayerless person takes breath first before a quiet time with the Lord. Buza ya kulina anya mge njimbulida ama zimache chisoka breakfast or prayer? Mge musiri, se mwe buze. Mgo soka kulia o soka kusaba. Chaya liruwe de, di totubo goli la sabaku. Musajia gobo no sabaku ni dobo ziri jakuka. Prayerless men read the newspaper before they can read their Bibles. What is in the news? Stop it. The news and the only good news is the Bible. Prayerlessness is remembering God only at prayer time. Why? Because I'm going to sleep lest I go. When I'm sleeping, so we don't quit it, are you? No, saba, no pakuka. What would you gain them? Prayerlessness is praying less than one hour a day. Akono kazibu. Matthew 26, verse 40. And he comes unto his disciples and find them sleeping. And said unto Peter, What could you, what could you not watch with me for at least one hour? Tell your neighbor, he said at least one hour. He didn't say at most. One hour is the at least of prayer. Chukile yomu loko le mungame njaga la mazima katinga tudamu revive your prayer. How long do you take in your prayer? And when did you ever pray for one hour? When you are by yourself. Richo mwina kusirika. Prayerlessness is manifested when one always only prays for himself or herself. That is praying survival prayers and not including revival in your prayer. Revival prayer is your kingdom come in this community. Your kingdom come in my organization. Your kingdom come in my family. Your kingdom come in this nation. Let your will be done, not only in your life, but in this nation. Prayerlessness is preferring to talk Read about prayer instead of praying. Because prayer is prayer. It's not talking about by prayer. With prayerlessness, prayer times are always forgotten. People will say, Why did you not pray? 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 Why did you not Prayerless people, how do you see them? When their characters remain unchanged and affected despite of much praying. The person praying is not making the much needed divine contact. He's not coming. That's what I told you. People don't meet God in their prayer. Had you been meeting God, your character will be different. The way you do things will be different. You keep changing and overcoming. Because there are things that can't go except by prayer and fasting. 
How do you know the church have become prayerless? When Christians rarely shed tears in their prayers. Ask someone, where did you do, last do it? Mubuze <laughs> A prayerless Christian has more prayer failures than prayer exploits or successes. Prayerless so never experiences spiritual transportation to the throne of grace. They don't go to the throne. They don't break through in the holiest of all. They stop somewhere in the courtyard. You feel dry, guilty. Even after skipping times of prayer, now you feel guilty. And then someone calls you and you begin to talk about how believers make themselves prayerful. Nolotemisota, are you prayerful or prayerless? Do you need revival in that area? Do you think God can revive your prayer life? Because taking long without praying, you become rusty. And you know, have you ever tried to put on a machine that has taken long without working? Rusty. You need to change the atmosphere in your house. You need to listen to worship in your car. You need to, so that your soul become, your inner man is lubricated. So it can flow. But when you're mechanical in your prayer, you can, 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 you you can, Omchalo yo na mugamba kani. Omchalo wa mita sindi hu. Trip. Na muagala nyo. Ewe mbebu la yo. Muteka kono muliliza. Dina wa ntumanji we ngambi. Kono nga teka ko. Kono nga teka ko. Kono nga teka ko worship o muru unji. Teka ko scripture reading by Benny. Teka ko malaka soma ulichimu. Teka ko ulizo mtu yonga soma nga ICM. Asaba. Ogeno kuri yanga umutima go guvayo, guvayo, guvayo. Oba teka ko worship. Do something. At least endeavor. Umana uba abataria. What do you do? Do you leave the child? Don't let us be serious, Vanang. You buy appetizers, you do everything, you do everything. But I'm one notaria, or Jacobuza Mikwano Jojuna. Go on, Natalia. Negamba Kuina, Yakatia, Gubanga, Guali, which is Bugatoria. Grudge the Put everything, do something. Can everybody raise his hand or a hand up and say, Lord, I confess and repent of my careless. About my spiritual life. Chidem God, I repent. I confess of my carelessness about my spiritual life, about my prayer life, about my commitment. Father, forgive me of any sin of indulgence that has contributed to my spiritual present condition. Say, dear gracious Father, Holy Spirit, 
I'm sorry for grieving and wounding you. Every time you have inspired me, you have led me, you have helped me, you have guided me to pray and I refuse. Please forgive me and be active in my life again. Say, Father, forgive me for the sin of spiritual indiscipline, of not making prayer and scripture meditation a daily priority in my life in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I repent of the sin of not having a personal or a family altar. Please help me. Please help me start one today and make me consistent in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me start. Lord, help me repair my personal altar, which has been in ruins. Lord, grant me a soul which is thirsty and a heart which is hungry for your presence. Give me also an unusual appetite for your words. Give me an appetite for your word. Give me an appetite for, your pr for prayer, for meeting you. And say, Lord, let my soul find satisfaction in you before anything else in the name of Jesus. Now I come against you. Gamba, I come against you. You false spirit of prayerlessness. I bind you. I cast you out of my life in the name of Jesus. You spirit of witchcraft in my foundation, pulling me, distracting me, scattering my mind, wanting to kill me and finish me. I command you, get off my, take off your hands. I'm no longer your candidate. I no longer belong to them. I disassociated. I say, get off my life. I pull down, I demolish every satanic altar, every witchcraft altar, domestic witchcraft altars, which have been raised up against my spiritual life. You dream when you are back, you dream when you are this, you when you are defeated, when you are in a when you are talking to your dead relatives, I cancel, I take my name off those altars. I withdraw my name from that altar. In the name of Jesus, every programmed evil against my prayer life, you shall no longer stand in the name of Jesus. Every programmed evil, every programmed altar, programmed intentions, you will not stand from now. Say in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of lukewarmness, every spirit of coldness, every spirit of spiritual apathy, fear of prayer, and spiritual dryness. Get out of my life right now. In the name of Jesus, you spiritual dryness, get off. Loose your hands off me. In the name of Jesus. And now say, Holy Spirit, fire. Now consume every satanic deposit that is blocking my spiritual man we get a lot of spiritual deposits some from other people the impartation of people we are with that don't matter that don't even add on you blocked your life has been blocked brother your life has been blocked sister before you get to another level of failure pray and say whatever that is blocking my spirit man from being effective in prayer from being effective in communion in fellowship and contact with God I command the fire of the Holy Spirit to consume you consume every blockage everything in the name of Jesus that is not of God Say, I bind right now and cast out of my life you spirit of excessive addiction to internet, to TV, to radio, to programs, to football, to literature, to videos, to newspapers, to sleep, to computer. You get into every addiction, those addictions to Rugambo, to, to criticism, to whatever that has no eternal value. I command all those, I bind them and I cast them out of my life. Out of, out, 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 out. Say, out of my life in the name of Jesus. Now say, Lord Jesus, help me devote more 
less life, more, more quality time rather. Say, help me devote, devote more quality time to you, O oh Lord, and more time of fellowship in the name of Jesus. Now I reject. You get an amanyagama. Now I reject every form of spiritual amputation of my prayer, praise, and scripture meditation. I refuse it. I reject it. No amputation. No amputation in the name of Jesus. Ma Njagarakat confession. Make a very loud confession and say, My spiritual life will not collapse in the name of Jesus. My spiritual life will not collapse, will never collapse at anything, whether disappointment, frustration, defeat. My spiritual life will not collapse, will not collapse in someone's hands, will not collapse in something's hands, will not collapse in some decision's hands, will not collapse in anything, will not collapse. The worry she gained a collapse in the Buddha Mubang, Mukama Bongamba, where Sarakuchin Rujache Salako. Now say loud and say, You food, you sleep, you sleep, Joker and Aman, you food, Gamba, you sleep. You will not have dominion over my prayer life in the name of Jesus. Where the Lord tells me to give up food for time, to give up something or sleep, I will do in the name of Jesus. Now say, Father, Father, grant me a special desire of prayer. Grant me a special desire for prayer. And grant me a special desire for my individual devotion, for prayer meetings with others, even night vigils where I need be. Lord, grant me that desire. Say, Lord, always grant me a holy detention in your presence. Okay, Lord, grant me a holy detention. Grant me a Now, say, Lord, again, make it impossible for me to hurry out of your presence from now on in the name of Jesus. Lord, you get an amani, Lord, make it impossible for me to hurry out of your presence from now on so that you may speak to me. Guide me. Talk to me about me, about my family, about my community, about my people, about my clan, about my nation, about my city. Lord Father, grant me both audience and utterance anytime I approach you. In your presence, help me also. Help me also to pray, praise, and worship you fluently in the name of Jesus and in the spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, let me hear people say amen from now. Say amen. Can I advise you? This live stream remains on if you are a good learner and if God is going to use you learn to repeat things or express and repeat what you have heard repeat the prayer and do it because it's there it's recorded repeat it and the more you repeat it the more it will sink it will not be the way you have done it here you'll meditate on it you'll think some of the words you've repeated you did not mean they did not sink as you do it about three times it will sink amen that is one of the principles of getting something rooted and implanted in you father we want to thank you for this day we want to thank you for these wonderful people i pray may you bless them through this week let this week be another week of exploits do something only you can do, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless you. I know you're going to do mighty things. You are going to speak to us. We're going to hear you. We do not want to be introduced in a new season without your blessing. 
let this exodus be a different exodus like the children of Israel experience because in their exodus they left with things they didn't expect things where they are going in the promised land only but they plundered Egypt and they left with a lot so we pray before we leave the year 2020 will plunder it will get out with a lot of wisdom ideas money ex we experience so Lord bless us so that we get out of this season with favor with acceptance in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray Amen Amen Briefly, when you are exiting a, v, a, a season and going into another, learn from the people of Israel. Though God had promised them a land that's flowing with milk and honey, they never left empty-handed. Like most of us feel, kuliko mwaka tewali chokulisa, togu kulika, otiko na guweba liza mukama. Echukukulisa kubango obo manjibu chelo hulo ozo mpia kuyendo kukolela kuno gufuru motia. Obo sikaza wiki emoba bili, it took one day for Israel to be paid back all the 400 years they spent in Egypt. One night. Can you tell your neighbor it will be one night and God will remember you. Chumugambe na manji one night. They left loaded. They did not live empty. Can you stretch your hand to someone and say, I prophesy that you live loaded. Loaded with ideas, loaded with wisdom, loaded with creativity, loaded with innovativeness, loaded with ideas for business, loaded with favor. Tote kwa genango uba utamala mwaka guli, guno tuguonye, toni nabi yowonye, furuma nechi intu. Gama mfuruma nevi ya angenze, mfuruma na amagezi, sente za angengena na zo. They did not only plant Egypt, they even made their children to carry. God was already pronouncing generational blessings. Beti kakolo dinezi abu ni bawa na bawa na bawa. Baba tuka mudungu mkama na waga mba chikati mwuzimbi le taba nako. Gamba akulina anyikati, waitika. Ni mkama gamba, zimba taba nako. Waiti senyu. Bricho kula mukama talim. Ozanzi juza county yang. Zijuza county yang. No wanna put in a muzibu. Busente chibu gendo kudu kana bubu no buye. Katemuri waka kuluna yeka yeka ya ya kuri sanori ya kaunga kwa ito ya galid. Neama nyimu kama. A save is a ma county abu. Taso wa kuri angaba la la. Unteke de burunji. So let us not only pray but obey the Lord in prayer time. When God speaks, obey. When God gives you instruction, obey. Mkama akumperu muksa. Take your offering. Let us give to the Lord. And, and as we give, let us remember. Let us remember, beloved, that uh, uh, apart from uh, the building at, at Mulawa, which we are going to shelter, shelter that place, roof that place before the year ends. Kati? Mukama ya manjizi wa mugamba nga nesi likira nga sigara nga kuro kwa gali kubange that's not my business it is business business ya gambi vyo muli mkwe mkorechi mula gire hali mkama anze mkugambi tina haba gaga wa mune mbegu no mbala gire na mwaba gaga wali wa no mbala gire kuwayo mwe baibuli wa gambi mwe uruo muli mkwa katonda kwa mazima kwe mula ba and uh, secondly, we have a conference. I mean, a, a meeting here. We still need. Kadof kafu kafu katono. 